By the end of this video, you will have an AI co-founder in your startup. But first, we need to talk about mutton chops. Not these mutton chops, these mutton chops. Specifically, his mutton chops. His name is Isaac Asimov. In the 1940s, he wrote a series of stories that portray the world where man and thinking machine lived together. Five years later, the Dartmouth conference happened. A combination of high IQs and empty social calendars brought these brainiacs together. Out of these conversations came groundbreaking research into natural language processing and neural networks. But this was all theoretical, which is a word with many syllables, so people didn't really care. But then AI started to pop up in movies, oftentimes portraying robots being very naughty and killing humans. But then Terminator 2 comes out and Arnold returns as a good AI and he sacrifices himself for humanity. Grown men cried everywhere and then people started to feel like, you know what, AI is not so bad after all. That did not last long because in 1997, our grandmaster champion of chess, Gary Kasparov, went up against IBM's Deep Blue and lost catastrophically. And it was the first major L that humanity took. But then email systems got really good at identifying spam 10 years later generative AI. Four things had to intersect. Machine learning needed a new algorithm that instead of classifying and predicting based on data, generates entirely new data. That algorithm was a new kind of model called the transformer model. And unless you wanted to pay a fortune and potentially burn the building down, you needed cloud computing. That was just the trigger. And this is the Gartner hype cycle. It tracks the evolution of technologies from inception to maturity. 2023 was the peak of inflated expectations. So here we are, which is where startups like you are going from experimentation and novelty to real world production and real value. But to get there, we're gonna need to come to terms with something very important and I need you to brace yourselves because I'm gonna say something shocking right now. Generative AI is not a magic solution that can solve any problem instantly. I couldn't have said that better myself. You have to work backwards from what's best for your customer. Users don't care about technology. They care about getting the best experience and accomplishing their goals. Startup is still a business, even if it's a Gen AI startup. So every decision you make needs to impact increasing revenue or reducing costs, which affects the unit economics of your startup. Now, most startups that pivoted immediately to become a Gen AI startup build their value proposition around generative AI, which is AI chatbots and apps, which is the most visible and easily accessible. Still very valuable, but any dude in the canoe can get there. Pro tip go deeper than the dude with the canoe. Now, as you go deeper, you're building more differentiated value, more of an IP, more of a moat, but you also need more insights, data, and technical expertise. The paradigm shift with generative AI is when you stop telling it what to do and think about who you need it to be to achieve an objective. Now it's time to create our AI co-founder who will help us take the next steps in the validation playbook. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to my co-founder, Isaac Schwarzenegger. Now you may be thinking, is this the hypothetical love child of Isaac Asimov and Arnold Schwarzenegger? I can neither confirm or deny that. But what I do know is this is the ideal co-founder. VCs don't say no to this guy. He says no to VCs. When he looks at a block of code, the code debugs itself and politely leaves. He doesn't take a salary, he doesn't take sick days, he doesn't complain, and most importantly, he does not get equity in my startup. So, there are three steps to bringing our AI co-founder to life. First, we will use prompt engineering to narrow down the persona and skill set that he can help us with our specific objective. Then, we will create a knowledge base and feed it every bit of information we gather so it gets continuously smarter for our specific context. And finally, we'll create an agent to bring him to life by taking actions as opposed to just giving us answers. So let's start with the prompt engineering. Prompt engineering is how we speak to large language models to achieve an objective. With prompt engineering, the golden rule is garbage in, garbage out. Which means that if you provide a prompt that's bland and generic and not well thought out, you're gonna get something that's bland and generic and not very helpful. Which is, by the way, the source of many of those creepy LinkedIn posts. So there are five important elements of prompt engineering. Setting the role, setting the context, the information, providing the objectives, and the required output. With these prompts, I can make Isaac Schwarzenegger become a technical co-founder who generates the code for my prototype, or I can make him play the role of an investor with experience in my particular market, so I can battle test and fine tune my pitch before speaking to a real investor. But if I want to go beyond having a conversation and have him analyze all those hours of user research interviews to plan features for my next prototype, all I need to do is upload the recordings of my interviews to a knowledge base and create an agent. And you can do all these steps on Amazon Bedrock. Bonus tip, you can apply as a startup to activate and get a whole bunch of credits to experiment with generative AI on AWS. Now it's time to utilize the final parts of the Nama toolbox to create our Frankenstein prototype, which will test the technical feasibility of our core feature. So like, subscribe, and stay tuned. tuned.